I'm telling you, every day, encouragement, fired up on top of it. Yeah, yeah. Thank you, Antonio. Thank you, sir. Yeah, I needed that. Oh, you're needed very that. welcome. Yeah. yeah. Amen. You're very welcome, man. You're very welcome. Woo. You're very welcome. My my hope and the joy is to build a mega company that is a leaning post for so many different people and a family and a economy that is off of group economics. That's my hope. My hope is to I don't know if I've ever told y'all my real vision of what I want to do. I don't know if I ever told y'all. You you, you can't tell everybody everything, girl. You can't tell everybody everything. You gotta yeah, you gotta hold on to some stuff. I think I'll go ahead and I mentioned part of it today. I mentioned part of it today. I mentioned part of it today. Remind me, Diana, remind me to come back and tell them why partially why I wanna be a billionaire. Partially. I won't I won't say all of it, but here we go. All right, we lend it over to you. Excuse the what Jerome said, I look terrible. I'm working on it. I'm working on it. I'm working on it. Go ahead, Diana. <laughs> Oh. Oh. You got you got your your phone muted down like a cell phone. Welcome, everyone, to another episode of Big Brick by Brick with Antonio T. Smith Jr. and Tempest S. Smith. This evening, they are discussing with us recovering after a major loss. So I present to you, ladies and gentlemen, our CEOs, Antonio T. Smith Jr. and Tempest S. Smith. I so appreciate Yay. you. Thank you. Thank you. Yay. Thank you. Thank you. We got a good subject for y'all today. We really do. So we'll wait for Tempest to cut our camera on and get ready. In the meantime, let me tell y'all, the I want to be a billionaire for a reason. Well, I, I'm not going to tell you the whole reason. You just have to find out when VH1 covers my story, you know, and something like that, you know, Sports Center covers it or something. But I'm not, I'm not going to tell you, but I will tell you the main, one of the main driving points that I have that no one really knows about. Where did the creating 100,000 millionaires come from? That That didn't come from, I don't know. Like, who, who would think that someone is crazy enough to say a hundred billionaire equals a lot of vegan Reese's? Yeah, <laughs> hundred thousand millionaires. My my plan, my goal is to hold on. Let me do this real quick. My goal is to change the collective conscience of the world. That drives me more than you know. I figured if I create 100,000 millionaires, then I can influence those 100,000 people to create this change that would be something so amazing as far as the consciousness of this world. So anyway, that would be why I want to do that. That's part of it, but I won't say much more. Tempest? Let us roll. Hey, everybody. Welcome to Brick by Brick uh, with Antonio and myself. Um, we took a break, and I'm grateful to be back here. I heard Antonio talking, saying that he thought that he was feeling okay. So I asked earlier. He didn't want to do this call because I heard his voice and I felt my pain. So I was kind of hoping that the two would meet in the middle to a no. But he said yes. And then I got right. quiet for like a minute. And he was like, you still there? And I was like, yeah, I'm still here. I was kind of waiting for that no nope. to pop back up. But here we are. Nope. If it don't, you can get up. Five in the morning, the coach with me with curls in the head, and Pam Norris can get up at three in the morning and it was sales training call. Oh, that dog here we go. I'm gonna push through. I'm gonna push through. Well, y'all welcome back, Tempest. 
She's been down for almost three weeks. Yes. Come on. There you go. Yay! Welcome back to Did we Thank find you. out if your car was totaled? Is your car totaled? Dion, cut a camera on just to give you some love. I can't talk about it. You can't talk uh, about it. Her lawyer court, says yeah. keep your mouth shut. <laughs> and then since we reach millions of people and the IRS is always watching, we understand. <laughs> but then you understand. That's this this is a, if this was, if we were regular, if we had a regular reach, then maybe she can talk about it. But since we out here in these millions of streets where well, she can't say nothing about it. Do y'all see her hair? That's a five hundred dollar hair dude. Look at it. It yeah. is not five hundred dollars. I don't spend that much money on hair. Damn. That's what they used to charge me. Maybe I got maybe I got swindled in the early two thousands. <laughs> they was like, I need five hundred dollars for my hair. It costs five hundred dollars. Maybe I was getting swindled. Maybe I didn't know. Or maybe when it first started off it was five hundred dollars. But it was something like that. It was like three hundred. You go down to Hottie and Jojo and they two of them get on your hair and they braid it real quick. What do you know about how? <laughs> Hilarious. Yeah, That's a braiding place in Houston for those who don't know. Yeah, Antonio, every right. day that I talk to you, you bust out with something that you're not supposed to know, and it just shocks me. So when we finish, I need to talk to you about who you talking to and what you listening to. I got young nieces that keep me hip and keep me okay. hip with me. They like twenty two and nineteen, and then my boys is ten and seven, and they they keep me super hip. I can't floss worth of nothing though. I still can't get it down, but well, not the floss y'all know of the backpack kid. But anyway, anyway, one more announcement: employee number one's birthday is tomorrow. Yes, really? yes, that's great. Grace has a birthday tomorrow. Mute your mic, Grace. Won't you say something? Well, I will be the big three nine tomorrow, and we'll be celebrating and getting this money. That's how we celebrate. Well, right well, right well, right well, well, since you want to talk like that, then I mean, well, one more announcement then. Uh, Plant Better Mindset Hour comes back tomorrow, and there is a word. Yes, yes, yes. You can tune in to me tomorrow at some time, I think 8 o'clock. 8, 9, or 8.30 to 9.30, something like that. Anyway, that, and we're talking about law of attraction for quite some time. I'm going to break it down for a while, y'all. I'm going to break it down for a while. So, yes. Great birthday yes. gift. Thank you, sir. Great birthday gift. And yeah, I'll be ready for that, and I will look at 25% tomorrow. <laughs> I'll look at 25% tomorrow. Man, there we go. If I cancel, it's because I got worse, but we'll get ready. Tip is? Go ahead and take us away. If you cancel, I doubt wow. it. Wow, I know who I am. Yeah. Like I, I totally doubt that I would cancel. Yeah, I know. Yeah. No. No. Law, he has extra children in his house that are sick that he's not immune to. So the extra children. You know what? So let me let me talk about that. <laughs> that's that's what's going on. And these damn kids over here. That's what's happening. Okay. No, 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 no. I mean, if y'all know me, I only like my kids, okay? That's mine. You understand? Everybody else's kids, that's y'all kids, you know? They smart, but they need to go home. You understand? Okay, all right. Somebody feeling me. I know it sounds terrible, but this is a surprising coming from Antonio. It would be surprising coming from Tempest. I like my kids. I can deal with my kids. I can handle their diseases. These new kids came over here with Ebola. Okay? <laughs> and now I'm missing the front of my face because of these kids. So all, you know, these, and they, and they one in three or something. So, you know, they carry the worst diseases. You understand? This, this, I got the daycare diseases going on right now. This is, this is wrong. Y- y'all know what I'm talking about. Don't act like you don't know what I'm talking about. These kids, these are daycare diseases. are terrible. But that's what's happening. So if I look like not a grown man, it's because one of these kids had one of these grown diseases. 
and it's all up in here. So anyway, shout out to your kids that need to go to your house. There it is. Right, I'm really done this time. I'm just saying. I know y'all love kids. I'm an adult now. I didn't like me as a kid. I'm done, Tempest. I'm a, before I get sued. <laughs> All right. On that note, <laughs> uh, tonight we're talking about recovering from a recovering after a major loss. Yeah, it's gonna be good. That's gonna be good. That's gonna be good. So I tell you what, let's abandon the script and let me ask you Great, a question. Because I don't have one. Oh, well, I'll stand it. I have. <laughs> I have one. I have Great. one. Great. Now, with, me and Tim is going to have two totally different perspectives here. I can tell you all right now, we are not going to see the same way on this subject, but it will be the same period. I'm not sure how to explain that better. We're going to take two totally different. I can tell you right now, we are, me and Tim are two fundamentally different people. We are not going to say the same things at all. But prosperity has one voice. Am I making that make sense, Law? That when you're talking about prosperity, right, we're all saying the same thing. It may come out in different ways, but we're saying the same thing. Tempest, tell, explain to us what a loss is. Um, are we talking personal or in business or? Well, here's the deal. That's a fantastic question. The only thing that could be a loss is the only thing that would affect you, period. So I guess in a sense, all losses are always personal, even if they're business. True. If we, you know, right. So what is a loss in your eyes? A loss in my eyes is Um, I'll just start like this, like having a goal and doing the work to meet that goal and then not hitting your goal. Wow. All right. So hold on real quick before you say some more. So we're, we're going to have a really good conversation, y'all, because that is, ex- I didn't expect him to say that, but that is exactly what she thinks. And even more, and I don't think none of that. Oh, wow. Okay. None of that. And most of y'all are going to relate to Tempest on this call because that is a fantastic answer she just gave because everybody I coach has that issue that she just said. Fantastic. Tempest, can you give us that definition again? Because it really has three moving parts that are fantastic. Even on psychology today, you can see her three moving parts. That's pretty good. Go ahead, Tempest. In my eyes, a loss is having a goal, working towards that goal, but not reaching your goal. That's in everybody's eyes. That's not just in my eyes or Tempest's eyes, right? That's everybody. That's everybody. Why does that bother you so much, Tempest? It bothers me because when you, you know, when you set a goal, you all hyped up and you prep for you ready for you know what's gonna happen and I added the working towards that goal part because um some of us make goals and then we don't reach that goal and then we get mad I mean we don't work towards the goal and then we get mad because the goal didn't magically appear like the lucky charms or something and it it affects you like you're working you put your all into it and you ain't reach your goal or you prep for a launch and you know, you put all the work, you did all the marketing, you did all the research and only one person bought from you or nobody bought from you or, you know, you didn't meet your dollar amount and you needed that dollar amount for some specific. So, yeah. Excuse me, I have a sugar craving, so. (laughs) I wish I could have those. I can't get those. I'm trying to get like lost stomach so I don't get to have sugar cravings. At least not obey them. 
All right, she's saying a whole lot here. Who agrees with Tempest? And all of you really should, because she's spitting facts on facts on facts on facts on facts. Right? Okay, that's most hands up. That's that is fantastic what she's saying. Tempest, let me go deeper, because all my answers are different than Tempest, and half of them y'all not gonna like. Tempest, let's go deeper. Why does that hurt so bad? Everything you just said. And we're going to go deeper two more times. Um, it hurts. Let me just be honest. <laughs> Lost? <laughs> <laughs> I was just talking Lost about got his like wine going ago. I, the, the Jesus turned water into wine. That's okay. Oh. Um, it hurts because uh, let me just talk about me not projecting on nobody else. It hurts because you put your worth and your value into what you're working towards. So when you don't reach that, it feels like I didn't, not only did I not hit my goal, now I'm not as worthy as I thought I was. I'm not as valuable as I thought I was. So now I'm only now I'm dealing with the lack of I'm dealing with the loss, but now I'm fighting an internal battle now. Okay, we're getting closer. We're getting closer. Internal battle. She's fighting that. It hurts. That still ain't the real reason why y'all be hurting. Let's go deeper, Tempest. Why does this internal battle bother you so much? What's the answer, Mom? I don't know. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> Fair enough. Grace, do me a favor. Give Anthony Lee the call information. He's trying to log on for the wrong call. Now, does it matter if you lost if no one can see it? To me, it does. If no one can see it, does it matter? To me. What what is it what does it mean? So it does matter or it does not matter? It does matter. Yeah. If yeah, you see it or see not, it, right? it matters. No, even it if you don't still. see it, it still matters. Fair enough. So now that so let's let's play both scenarios then. What does it mean when people see your loss? <laughs> when people see your loss, it's like um, I'm not who I pumped myself up to be or I said out loud this is what's going to happen and then this didn't mm. happen now I look like a fraud and now mm. people You're helping lose somebody trust right in me. Now. Um, You're helping somebody right now. It's just a major blow to the ego. Your pride get hurt and then you either want to quit or you want to overwork to prove yourself and prove them wrong. Mm, 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 mm. Who did she just help with that? I say y'all don't want to be real today. That was extremely relatable. That was. Can I say something? <laughs> yes. Can I say can. something? Okay. Uh, this past school year, the 2018-2019 school year, was my first full year of retirement, and so May 31st, 2018, was the day I retired. But let me tell you something. If May 31st, 2018 came up and I found out I had to stay in the classroom another year, I'm trying to tell you everything Tempest just said. It, mm, I told my principal to her face, if, 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 if I stay here another year, it's not going to be good for you. It's not going to be good for me. And it's not going to be good for those kids. And so I knew. So if, I'm telling you, if I, had, if I had to stay in that classroom, everything Tempest said is on point. But isn't it always on point, regardless of the situation? I mean, you're absolutely right. Let, let me ask you a different question. I'm, I'm asking you a different way. Tempest, I'm coaching you now. I haven't coached you in a while. I haven't coached Tempest in years. I, I don't really have to, but I haven't coached Tempest in years. But I'm coaching you now. You ready, Tempest? When's the last time I coached you? Mm. 
15, 17. Right, that's about right. That's about right. It's been years. It's been years since I coached Timbis. Timbis, you're on my couch now. Well, I'm going to create a scenario for you. <laughs> I'm going to create a scenario. Yeah, if if you if you coach with me, it's pretty it's pretty tough. It's pretty tough. Yeah. Yeah, it's coaching with me is 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 quite different than what you would think it is. Yeah. Tempest, let's say no one on planet Earth existed. Okay. Mm-hmm. It's just you, like Will Smith, and I am less just you. Mm-hmm. Would failure be failure if no one can gauge that failure? Um, no, because I wouldn't have anything to compare it to. I wouldn't know what failure was. All right. So pause for a second. I go back to my original question. Is the losses, are losses losses? Because they're losses or are they losses because people see them? Hmm. Um, I guess because people see them. Because if there was no one on planet Earth, who am I comparing myself to? So, okay, so let's go back to my definition of loss. It's me comparing myself to, let's say, Lisa Nichols. I'm not meeting Lisa Nichols success and, level that I see. So yeah. I tell myself, well, I'm not good enough or I'm losing, but I'm comparing myself at level one to Lisa Nichols 20 years in the game. Mm. Mm. Go say that now, Tips. <laughs> Dion, I'm about to come to you. Because I see some energy flying off of you. I'm going to have yes. you address Tempest. I know. I, look, I see it. I'm going to have you talk to Tempest. Because every time she says something, you over there just own it. Yes, yes. Wait a minute. Before both of y'all talk, Okay. I need y'all to hear the last thing Tempest just said. I'm comparing year one me to year 20 Lisa Nichols. That, we can end the whole show right now. We can. Without explanation, we can end it with that one statement. Because that's what y'all do, especially in the age of social media. You can... You compare your mistakes to everybody else's scissor reels. Yes. Can I talk? Can I talk? At social (laughs) media. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Let it run. Let it run. This this doesn't have to do with business, but it kind of does. Okay. First of all, I want to start off by saying it prompted when you said, well, does it matter if no one's around or if no one sees you? So the first thing I thought was that age old question. If a if a tree falls in the woods and no one's around to hear it, does it make a sound? Okay, so that was kind of rolling around in my head. But okay, this was this is my personal experience. My last business, it was a it was a pills and potions, health and wellness business. I became the face of the company because I lost over a hundred pounds with no exercise. So they were sending me places, speaking. I was speaking engagements and blah, blah, blah. And I was this and I was that. Well, um, that didn't help my business any. And something, and, and I have this, we, we have this back and forth. You know, I, I get a little bitter because you would think, well, shoot, if I'm the face of the company, why am I not making any money? You know, so anyway, that's neither here nor there. But what happened in the last, I, I, I got sick. And I had to have surgery and I was off my feet and and long story short, I put all the weight back on. So he was the inner struggle because I was the face of the company for losing all this weight. And then, hello, I put it all back on. So I didn't want to leave the house. I didn't want to talk to anybody on social media, no pictures, no this, no that, because I'm like, and, and, and one of my friends said, well, girl, you're just like everybody else. Everybody goes through that. I said, that's fine and good, but everybody else was not a spokesperson saying how mm-hmm. they, they accomplished so much, you know? So, yeah, so I'm mm. just, just getting to the point after I went on social media about six, seven months ago and, and bared my soul and said, okay, yes, you know, I failed and I did this and I'm, you know, struggling, you know? So, yeah, I did that whole thing, you know? So, yeah, so it's really touching a nerve when you say, is it really failure if no one sees it? Yes, it is failure because I, I wasn't, I'm not where I wanted to be, 
But then when you say, well, you're comparing yourself. Yeah, I am comparing myself, you know, so. <laughs> yeah, I'm yeah, ranting, yeah. I'm the ranting, but it's like, oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know, so yeah, yeah, yeah. Failure, no. that inner struggle is a, um, mm. Okay, I wanted to say something else, but we're being taped. <laughs> Y'all know no, what I'm no, we ain't we ain't say. Well, they oh. they say, yeah, but I'm not. Yeah, that's all right. B i t c h. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yes, it is. Yes, yes. it is. Yes, I'm it is. I'm a heathen. I'm a heathen, so it's all right. You can say what you want. The rest of these folks are saved. Now, I'm sure you're gonna talk again because Tempest has Tempest is an expert on this subject because. Tempest creates losses, bounces back from losses, Ooh. and has gone on a whole journey from losses, and then became comfortable with losses all in one, sometime all in one day, sometime all at the same time. She's a real human being, and she has this high level of empathy that even takes on other people's losses. So she's fantastic here. So I'm pretty sure she's going to make you say plenty. Campus, what would you respond to that with Dion and all that realness she said? Because, listen, nothing about Dion what she said was wrong. It's all facts. As a matter of fact, before I let Tempest go, first off, the stress of spokesperson made her sick, surgery, put on steroids, steroids increased her appetite, she gained the weight. So that's what nerds do. That's simple. I can rationalize that like that from her talking. So she didn't fail. She was a victim to cause and effect, but I'll come back to that later. <laughs> I mean, I have nothing to add to that. I can't really preach that. She did that. Ain't nothing else to be said. I do want to go right. back to that social media thing. I don't know if you oh, were yeah. going to go there. No, um, you... I... <laughs> You said, or I think both of y'all say, you know, you get on social media and you compare yourself to what you see, but a few things. I have never taken one picture and posted that one picture on social media. I've had a whole photo shoot with myself, pick the best one, you pick lie. the best filter, and put it on there. So, number you one, lie. what you see is not real. It's not in the moment. It's what I chose to share with you. I didn't choose to share the ugly pictures or the bad angle or the bad lighting. I chose the perfect picture. So don't compare yourself to what you see somebody posting because they edited, they backspace, they went to Google to make sure they using the right uh, present tense. They making sure they have no typos. They making sure they have the best picture, the best lighting, the best angle, the best outfit on the best day, right, Law? Making sure our hair is together. You know, I'm going to bring okay. up Law in a second. I'm going to bring up Law in a second. You just reminded me of something. So I can't, it's, it's natural because we're in social media age, but you have to remember that it's edited. It's filtered. Mm. It's not as real as people say that they are on social media. They go back and edit a post. They go back and mm. touch up a picture. Well, so well, it's I, not real. It's what is as real as they want you to pretend to be. Oh, and, and, and I agree with that totally. And, and let me interject. I did not compare myself to anyone on social media. My thing was the whole reason why I went and did this testimonial rant was I did not want to be caught in Walmart and see somebody who I hadn't seen since I put the weight back on and get the look. Like, Oh my God, mm, what happened mm, to you? Mm, you know, mm, that, I can't wait till I talk. <laughs> that's <laughs> why I preempted and said, okay, I've been going through some things, blah, 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 because I didn't want the look. So, okay, I'm done. <laughs> no, no, you're you going to keep talking. You're going to keep anybody on fire by the side. You're going to keep talking. Listen, y'all going to, y'all going to hate what I got to say. I'm telling you, me and Tempest have two totally different views on a lot of things. That's why we work well together. And then especially on this one, especially Tempest, I think, but everybody, y'all speaking facts though. 
You're speaking, Dion Tempest, from what everybody else thinks. And that's facts. That's facts. That's that's a hundred percent facts, right? No nobody's wrong. This is this is real talk. This is real talk. Let's talk about the look. <laughs> Tempest, how do you feel about the for well, first off, I never knew you took photo shoots. Why did I not know this? You had that well. I thought you just let me bring up law real quick. Let me bring up law real quick. The law was down here. We was taking pictures. I was in my cool shades, and we was taking pictures, right? And I'm a sexy motor scooter. Okay, let me just tell y'all right now. I'm just dead serious, and and I, and I meant motor scooter without the the motor scooter. I meant it with the non Sunday school words. I am. I got a stomach. That's a sexy ass stomach. I'm telling y'all right now. I'm I'm telling you, you can lay on this stomach, okay? <laughs> you can. It 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 it'll, it'll comfort you. I'm telling you, it it will. I'm just telling you, this stomach. It it it'll, it'll relieve your shoulder tension when you put your arms around it, right? And uh, all that good stuff. I'm telling y'all, that's how I feel. And I started. We was finna take. I finna take a picture. And I said, take my shirt off a lot. He was like, no, don't do that. Now, he wouldn't say that about me. But he's talking about, I remember some later. I didn't give a damn about later. Let me tell y'all something. I care not. Law, I'll beat you right real quick. Did it look like I cared, Law? Did you get a sense of any time you was <laughs> down here that I cared about anything anybody thought? Did not care one bit at all, one hundred percent. Matter of fact, you can throw an extra zero on that. It's one thousand percent. Ah, gosh. I don't. I don't care about nothing. Nobody think about me. It's true. It, it is, I'm this great contradiction because at the same time, I care about people. Like I am a huge server of others. But what you think about me, child, I don't care one bit. I don't. I don't. I don't. And there's a reason why, but I'll, I'll get to it here in a little bit. Let's go back to Tempest because Tempest, so y'all get more value from Tempest than you're going to get from me. Okay, you're going to get far more value from Tempest than you're going to get from me because Tempest gets it. You understand what I'm saying? She gets it. I don't. I don't. I don't get it, but I'll, I'll explain when I when we get there. Except it's the look, the photo shoot, the you got a big old stomach. Let me tell you something. Let me this. I, I keep every time I get to the stomach, I just want I want to do my commentary. I would put on speedos. Real talk. You just gonna get all this stomach. I do you a favor and I say the bikini line. I do. You, I do you a favor and I do that. Only because you know. I'll just do you a favor. I will let my and you ain't gonna be able to see my speedos and my stomach gonna hang over it. You understand what I'm saying? I'm gonna look naked. <laughs> I'm gonna look naked. You understand what I'm saying? I'm just telling you what it is. I'm just telling you what it is. And I will go out there gladly in my little speedos and my stomach over it, and you think that I ain't got no clothes. No issue. And I, and you all of you will give me the look. And I'll sit there like, shit, this is sexy stuff. You wish you had this stomach. <laughs> I'm dead serious. I'm, I'm tip as I'm alive. I'm dead serious. There's no one who knows me that does not think that I won't walk out there like that. I will. I, I, I absolutely will. Too much to y'all. Stop. Stop. He, this is facts to me. <laughs> this is a fact to me. <laughs> right. So the look, all that stuff, all this crazy stuff I'm saying, Tempest, what makes normal people, empathetic people, have the exact opposite reaction to almost everything that I have? What makes you, and I don't mean care about looking a bad way, but what makes the look so dreadful? Um, hmm. I'm not good enough in the other person's eyes. Mm, that's good. 
That's good. That's good. I just checked my comments. Tip to say, please turn his mic off, Father. That's what I just. I just, <laughs> I just checked my phone. I'm not good in the other person. Good enough in the other person's eyes. Who else suffers from that? Come on, it's all good. It's all good. That's everybody, right? Um, it's everybody. Antonio. I have it's, you. No, no, Tempest. Address Tempest. She, she, I mean, she's the expert here. Yeah. yeah. Tip is with you saying that it's amazing that this conversation is happening because I just got the phone with my niece and we were talking about when we grew up and what you're speaking of what is what happened to us, uh, not being a good enough for her grandma, which was my foster, my adopted mom. And I even went so far to, I was telling her, I held my head down low when I walked in her presence. And there, there were times where if I held my head up high, she would say, who do you think you are? Oh, or I had to walk a certain way. If I walk a normal walk, when I get in her presence, I better be tiptoeing. Or when I speak, I became a whole different person. I had to speak as though I was shy or I, when I'm around different people, I could speak myself. I could be fully me. But when I'm around her, I had to talk like I was a slave. It was a yes, ma'am. It was like I, I couldn't be myself. And so I think with that has developed me the way I am about people perceiving me being a certain way and the way I want to be. That is the most fantastic thing I've ever heard you say, Talisha. Tempest, is this an area for you or for me? Which one of us is gifted here? That's what I thought. Okay. <laughs> Talisha's reward system is messed up. Okay. She's been rewarded for being a slave, rewarded for being weak. And so now in her daily life, she will continue to be a slave. She will continue to be weak, not because she doesn't want prosperity. It's because for decades, she's been rewarded for poverty, and that has been prosperity for her. I know this. I know this all to be true. I'm speaking from a scientific level because Seymour Freud says that human being, and this is proven, we ought to move towards pleasure or from pain. It is how we... It's how propaganda is created. Propaganda became PR. PR eventually morphed into consumerism. And the truth is, I know this for sure because my dad was a raging drug addict alcoholic. And before I was six, I was rewarded for being a feminine man. Because he had to be the most masculine of all. And we would, as an abuser, we would know if he walked in happy, we could be happy. If he walked in buzz, is what we would say in the hood, then we had to watch it. And no matter how much we watched it, we would still pay for it. Am I making sense to somebody? Right? Yeah. So I was rewarded in the early part of my life. So when I, I had a rough time being homeless, well, I guess everybody had a rough time not being homeless, especially at six, but I had a rougher time because when I was six homeless, I was a feminine boy, okay? Because my reward system was messed up. Because of that, I got raped and molested on the streets because I wasn't tough enough. I wasn't able to protect myself because my reward system was jacked up due to my abusive father, right? So Talisha is going through a messed up reward system. And here's how you know if your reward system is messed up. Check your harvest. Like right now, check your harvest. Just look at your life right now and look at it. Every single thing in your life is a product of your thoughts, period, 
point blank. It just is. And if you say things, if this is one of your statements, your reward system is messed up. I know I want more, but I keep doing this. I don't know why. Your reward system's messed up. You don't know why, because secretly in the view of you, it rewards you to sabotage. It rewards you to lose. Because human beings only do two things, move towards pleasure or from pain. Pain for most people that I coach, by most, I'm putting this in the 80 percent, 80 percentile. Pain is actually reward for them. Here's what that looks like. I'll give you a few examples. Example number one. You get into a relationship, you're more proud of how you can please that person than how you are perceived. I wish I had somebody. You're super good at sex because that's your reward system. I know I'm talking to a few people. I know I am. I'm I'm doing this for a living. I charge a lot for it. But you don't know who you are. You're so proud of what you can do to your mate, but not proud of you being with your mate, not proud of you outside your mate, right? Example number one. Example number two, the mental picture in your head doesn't match the, doesn't match the physical picture of your life, and you're always pissed off, always. And when you're not pissed off, you're depressed, and you cycle yourself from depression to pissivity all the time. You just, just go. You just go. You just go. You literally say, <laughs> Somebody told me to get out there. Here. You literally say, I know I shouldn't eat this, but I'm going to eat this anyway. You, here's how you know when your reward system's messed up. You secretly think this is going to hurt. Losing weight is impossible for you. Not impossible. But somehow you're so outside the laws of physics that your body don't work that way. That's, that's Talisha's problem. That's everybody's problem that I, I run across. Here's your solution. You need to change the mental picture in your head. That's, that's your solution. The mental picture in your head is making you gain weight making you sustain that weight. It is allowing you to stay where you are. The mental picture in your head makes you gorgeous and you think you're ugly. You're the only person who thinks you're ugly. Right? You look in the mirror at this gorgeous figure and you go, no, nah, something's wrong with this part of my hair. My nose is too big. My teeth are this white ass. My neck is too long. Some of you love everything about you except your pinky toe. <laughs> right? And you, you, you take this half a percent of you and you hate that. It makes no sense. The part that no one can see. Right? And it just, it just bothers you. It bothers you to the maximum supreme. The solution is you need to change the mental picture in your head. Now, is that easy? No. Because, and I got this from a talk between Tempest and Shannon, what I'm about to say next. Because you have your identity in your losses, in your low self-esteem. You don't know who you are if you actually have a good day. I think that's the perfect alley-oop to you because you and Shannon said that on ATS Week, right across from each other. Both of y'all phased up to phase five at the same time after I heard that video. (laughs) I'm going to throw that alley to you and let you say what you want to say. Well, it's the same thing that you said about our reward system. We put our worth and value into what we can get out of something. So if I'm... Sorry, this hurts anybody. If I am addicted to 
abusive relationships or abusive friendships, then my identity, I don't feel whole and complete unless I'm in an abusive relationship or with an abusive friend. So I do whatever it takes to get that fixed, right? I do whatever it takes. I create toxic environments so you can be abusive, so I can feel like myself, so I can feel worthy, so I can feel love. Because I've told myself and I've conditioned myself, only time so-and-so loves me is if they're abusive towards me. And I deserve that. I enjoy that. That's how I get to, I have a good night's sleep if someone is abusive towards me. So we put our identities in the losses, in the abuse, in the low self-esteem, in the whatever, because we don't know ourselves. We don't want to get to know ourselves. We don't love ourselves. We don't want to get to love ourselves. So we put our identity or create identities in what I can get from other people or in our addictions that not addictions, right? Because we don't, we don't think that our addictions are really addictions because we're not addicted to alcohol or drugs, so we don't think we have addictions. But there are other things to be addicted to besides drugs, alcohol, food, whatever, sex, whatever. You can be addicted to pain, and if you don't get your fix, you go to bed at night feeling unworthy because you're not in pain. Boom. All facts. You can actually find out half the second half of what she was talking about. It's a great book and movie about the book called What the Bleak Do We Know? About two quantum physicists and their assistants. And I really, really like the book and the movie. I read, I found out about the book. I read the book first and then the book mentioned the movie and then I got the movie. Fantastic. <clears throat> Fantastic. It was The Secret Before the Secret. All right, that came out in 2005, and then The Secret came out in 2008. So it's fantastic. It's absolutely fantastic. I don't know how to – you want to ask me questions, Tempest? Yeah, because we never got to this part with you. What do you define a loss as? No such thing. No such thing as losses. No such thing. No such thing. And I'm not saying that from a place of, oh, well, you know what? He's doing all right now. No. Nope. How do you think I got out the trash can? And no one ever processes fully. You know the story of the trash can, but you not you never thought about a kid minding himself out of a trash can. You never really process that information. You can't possibly process that information because you compare a kid to whatever you think a kid is. But how in the heck, with no mentors, no help, no nothing, did I get out this trash can, which is documented. I went to jail in this trash can. And this, is, this is public record. Ain't no losses. It's impossible. Because what is a loss? Something that you're automatically comparing to a win. What is comparison? something that's no longer in you, it's out of you. And nothing in this world is out of you. Every single thing in this world is in you. Period, point blank. It's the truth. It's not the answer you want to hear. That's why I'm not relatable. I'm not. I'm not relatable, right? And when it comes to stuff like this, I am not relatable. Tempest is far more relatable than me on this one. There's no such thing as losses. If I removed every single thing out of this world but you, you would never have lost. As Tempest adequately said, I would have nothing to compare it to. Your problem is comparison, not losses. <laughs> That's your problem. Your problem is you have compared your company to other companies. It's the truth. You know, I've been in I've been in business fourteen years. I should be here. Says who? My hair should be this long by now. Says who? Says all the people you have allowed to get in your headspace. 
You're not living your life. These aren't your thoughts. You don't even have your thoughts. Most of you right now listening to me, you have spent 100% of your life in somebody else's thoughts. And you're wondering why you can't have 100% of your harvest. You ain't living your life. Ouch. You're just not. You're just absolutely not. There's no such thing as losses. They can grow rich says they're just opportunities. Right? All opportunity shows up as losses. I swear to God to you, the thinking girl, rich, rich man in Babylon say the same two things. I promise you. I'm not even making this up. For some of you rich thinking girl, rich, you know, scholars, you know exactly what I'm talking about, especially if you read Rich Man in Babylon and Think Girl Rich. There is no losses. Now, am I telling you you're wrong? Nope. You're not wrong. Because everybody thinks like you. But that's why there's a 1% because you keep making it a 1%. You keep making me. Not me. It's the truth. It is the truth. I did not make me. You made me. It's the truth. It is the absolute truth. Because while you were retreating, I was taking ground that was rightfully yours. This is going to happen. I guarantee you this is going to happen in the next eight, six, in the next six to 18 months. You're going to watch a global retreat. I'm telling you right now. You're going to watch a global retreat of resources. In fact, someone, I'm on, I'm on my Nostradamus right now. Someone write this down. I need to. I need the date of this. So when I when I can say I told you so, I want to put it on the internet. I want to come back to this date, man. This video, write this date down for me. I have no idea what the day is. Oh, it's eleven because it's Grace's birthday tomorrow. No, no. So there you go. All right. It's the only reason I know what today is. Write this date down and predict what I'm about to say. The next six to eighteen months is going to be a global. It's going to be the beginning of a global retreat that will last about seven years. The beginning of a global retreat, global. The news is going to get worse. Unless Beto O'Rourke or Bernie Sanders win the Democratic nomination, Trump will be president again. I'm, I'm calling these out right now. I'm telling you right now. I'm telling you. Unless Beto award or Bernie Sanders win a Democratic nomination, Trump will be president again. The U.S. dollar is going to take an 18% decrease in value. Our military is going to double in size. Voter Actually, let me just say it this way. People of color persecution will be normalized. And the media will market every last bit of it. The church will have no place because the church will become the media, and the politics. And no one would do anything about it but lock themselves in their living rooms, cut on their favorite TV shows, and say, leave me alone. And people like me would take everything you retreated from. You write all that down, Grace? Did somebody write it down? I typed what you said. Can I ask you a question, Antonio? Sure can. Sure. So, so not to presume um, global retreat, I'm just to simplify it, let me say that. 
I presume you mean it, it's going to get obviously this. What you're saying, of course, the retreat is our growth, our anything of any positive nature will will either cease. Sorry. Um, it will either cease or it will will be worse. Is that what you're saying? Worse than that. I'll get in more detail, I more specific. No. Can you can you hear me now? Okay. Can I can hear. Can it was me. me. I can hear you. Yes. Okay. Good. Good. Mm -hmm. I can hear you. All right. I, worse. I'm going to get more specific now. The the United States will become number two in power when it comes to actually, or probably two or three, everything but military might. <clears throat> but we control all the federal banks, which will keep us number one in control. Power is not the same thing as control. Don't get it twisted. Control is greater than power. All you need to do is control power to have power. You don't need power. <laughs> you don't need power to have power. You need to be the prophet in the power's ear. You understand what I'm saying? Let's go, let's go even more specific. There will be no middle class, but they'll tell you as one. The middle class will become the poor class. The global class will become the new upper class. Upper class will become middle class. Anything of computer programming will become a commodity, meaning playing a video game, speaking Spanish today. And it's not going to get worse. The United States is going to pick the, the, the pick of the litter from all nations, bringing them here with an H-1B-1 visa, with an Einstein visa. And we will continue to do what we've always done in a way that we've always done it. We would take the smartest people and we would build great economies out of them for just the elite only. This is what happened in the next six to 24 months. One of the first signs of this is they're gonna, there's going to be a public, a series of public events that the church, the police, and the federal government should condone, should not condone, excuse me, but it will. How do I know all this information? Because history repeats itself. Truth is, I'm not prophetic. I'm extremely learned. The same way they hung Negroes in trees. You better go all the way back there. Except for it won't be hanging Negroes. It'll be hanging the it'll be hanging the middle class. I'm telling you right now, it's already there. It's already there. Period. Why? Because y'all going to keep them in power. So that's what you're doing right now. You're going to transfer all your wealth to people like me. It's the truth. It has nothing to do with me. I don't mean to be doom and gloom. I'm telling you that the 1% cannot exist without the consent of the 97. In order for the 1% to control all that income, you had to say that's normal. 
In order for Trump to be president, you had to say that's normal. I'm not saying nothing wrong with his presidency. I don't care the way you care. Because I don't fight those kind of battles. Nor does the one You do know none of the 1% cares that Trump is president. And the next president, none of the 1% is going to care that that president is president. 20 presidents from now, I'll be dead, but I'm not going to care who that president is. Do you understand what I'm saying? Because I have my own economy. I'm, in, I'm, I'm untouchable. I'm completely untouchable. No such thing as losses. I can't tell you how many people on this very phone call have doubted me on one time or another. I'm still winning. You still here. <laughs> it's the truth. It's the absolute truth. And you have the audacity to say something totally untrue about me. He broke. He this. He that. That's fine. But I, my winning record, you ain't never seen me lose. I dare you to recount one of my losses since you know me. Since any of you know me, I got no losses. The only losses that I have are the ones you rumor or you heard rumors. I got no losses. I got no losses for two reasons. No losses for number one, I win. I never quit. So I have no choice but to win. Number two, you gave me permission to win at your expense. If I was selfish, I wouldn't tell you. If I was selfish, I wouldn't include you in my economy. It's the truth. But you gave me consent to be here. Period. What sounds rude is someone in power telling you how to get in power. Stop consenting me to be in power. Stop it. Because I only got here because you gave me permission to stand on your back. It's the truth. It's the absolute truth. There are no losses. Loss doesn't exist. There is only a transfer of energy, and all heat eventually cools at some point and then gets reheated at some point. It is the truth. None of you will ever die. I know it. That's so hard to accept. You won't. What's going to happen is all of you have a trillion, I was going to say a billion, but it's more like a trillion. You have a trillion different business systems in your body. And over time, those systems just burn out. When enough of them burn out, that's what you call death. I am currently not sick. I didn't just start feeling this way this morning. There was a certain amount of bacteria already growing in me. It wasn't enough to reach the threshold for me to feel it. When it got past a critical moment, that's when I said I'm getting sick. The truth is I was sick before I felt it. All of you are sick. There is no losses. It's not. Zero losses. Losses can only happen if you let somebody else tell you that's a loss. A baby. So I got another. I got another mm-hmm. question. This is so good. No problem. I'm listening. This is so good. Sorry to answer, and I apologize for interrupting you. It's no, nah, you're good. You're good. Here's what's interesting. What you're saying makes cold, total and complete sense to me. I, I do, with one exception. And that one exception, am I understanding you to say that a loss 
every one of us that has whatever this lost mentality is has been defined by us we we took this word yep. and we put a definition on this word so technically yep. loss is just a word until we get in the way is that what i'm hearing you say ain't that what you felt when you was two um thinking so i just this is this yeah. big this is huge but then, <laughs> yeah. then, then then we can go even deeper everything is everything is relative it's everything from p p the positive of how we feel about the p political environment because i guarantee you we all have an opinion about that but again it's how we define this is too much this is too much I, now I, you know what I, <laughs> i'm I glad get, you said that. Wine. i need that wine I need I'm glad you said that because you just you just threw the most perfect alley oop to Tempest and Diana. You really did, because they're 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 reading some esoteric stuff right now. Let's let's. I'm gonna throw the alley oop to Tempest. Actually, I'm gonna throw the alley oop to Diana. Then I'm gonna throw the alley oop to Tempest because Tempest and uh, Diana's gonna throw the alley oop to Tempest. Diana, unmute your mic for me real quick. You were just reading a book called The Untethered Soul, and last night you called me on this whole nerdgasm about driving past trees um, and all that stuff. I want you to explain that because when you do it, Tempest is going to tomahawk slam dunk it because Tempest knew this naturally, suppressed it, and then said, I'm tired of suppressing myself and exploded. That's how she is where she is today. So go ahead, Deanna, explain that, which is going to validate what Adonia just said, which is going to push a slam dunk for Tim. So in this particular part of the book, it was talking about blocking your energy, like closing yourself off. And when you block your energy, you're not releasing it, so it just kind of stays in rotation within you. And they gave an example of a gentleman who thought he saw his girlfriend light light blue Mustang with two people sitting in the front of it hugged up. And they were saying how as you as you pass up trees, you don't you, you see them but you don't acknowledge them. As you pass up, you know, the the buildings, you see them but you don't acknowledge them. You to basically you let that flow through you. But when he saw that, it stopped. It stopped right within him and he shut it in there. And they were saying, it, the book was saying how when you don't let the energy flow through you and you don't allow it, it get, it's, it's still there and it will come up if it's triggered. You know, they gave an example five years later, he's married with the family. They're all driving in the car and he sees a random Mustang, not even a blue Mustang, but a random Mustang with two people in the front hugged up. His entire, his entire demeanor changed. He got irritated, got agitated, got frustrated, all of this because he didn't let the energy flow through him and just allow it to just continue to flow through him and out of him. Now stop, right there, the okay, hold on. stop right there. Stop right there. All y'all related to that. Because all y'all the same. Let me show you what I relate to, which is why all my predictions will be true. Deanna, I want you to explain those doggone driving in those trees and how energy is supposed to be, according to that book. Yeah, uh, 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 uh. Don't look, don't pick up the book. <laughs> nope. Because <laughs> let me tell you, let me tell you why I did that. Now, hold on. I am only you. I'm talking about all of y'all. It's the truth. There's one of us in the room. I've never told you something you didn't already know. You were blocked from the information. I unblocked you. That's all. It is the truth. There's no one on planet Earth smarter than anybody. You don't need books to say what you already know. You need books to unblock what someone else taught you you know. All right, so don't use the book. Tell me about the driving and the trees as we perceive them and how energy is supposed to be because Tempest has a fire up in her that's about to come out. <laughs> we are supposed to remain open 
and let the energy flow through us because the energy is already within us. When we pass by a tree, we see the tree, we enjoy the tree, and we move on. We see the building, we enjoy the building, and we move on. But when we lock it within us, it literally stops our energy flow. That's when you become lethargic. That's when you become tired. That's when you you literally, like, go into a dark place within yourself because you shut off the energy flow. But when you actually allow the energy to flow through you and you're open, you're always full of energy, you're always excited, and you feel that on a consistent basis. Boom. So let me set that tempers way. up. Thank you very much, Sam. I'm trying no, to make sure I understand this. Mm -hmm. Okay, so Go. let me make sure I understand this. So, okay, when I go out every morning, I look at the sun, I mean the sunrise, or when I go out every day and I look at the sunset, if, if I go one day without doing that, I'm not allowing. Almost, um, almost, <laughs> almost. I got you. Let me let me let me let Tempest set go, and then it's gonna make sense, and then we'll come back to you. Okay, here's your foundation, Tempest, that you're gonna jump off of. I'm gonna take Talisa's sunset. It's not about not paying attention to the sunset. Talisa has always paid attention to the sunset. You understand what I'm saying? It's not about Adonia's commute to work, even though she's closer to her job. It is about the fact that she can drive on autopilot, have no idea she got there, get there, because nothing offended her. So she was in perfect, she was in so much harmony, she just got there. Oh, I'm going somewhere. Walk with me. Since nothing offended her along her way, she got there on autopilot the same way she can get to any other goal. Third time is going to be the challenge. Everybody going to get it this time, y'all. Adonia gets into her car. She controls a controlled explosion inside of her engine. They call that combustible engine. She remembers how to drive when she first learned that 16. Remember how hard it was to remember how to drive, y'all? Remember how difficult that was? Now she does it without effort. She can drive in six-inch heels. She can take those heels off and drive barefoot. You know you bad when you can drive in heels or without heels. You understand? She can drive in rain, all sorts of stuff. And she doesn't even notice it. She automatically, the universe automatically guides her to her destination besides a billion threats along the way to her life. She was in harmony with all the energy around her. She passed the mountains and trees she wants. When she first saw it, it was like amazing. Now she just allows that energy to flow through her. And by autopilot, Talisha, she gets to her destination the same way autopilot I got to the top 1%. Why? Because nothing offended her along the way. She didn't block herself from her destination by being offended. She just got there. But when she focuses on stuff that offends her, she never gets there. And if she does get there, she gets there like the guy in peaks and valleys and goes, darn, I got to the peak at night. I couldn't see the sunset. Tempest, take us all the way slam dunk home. I don't know if I have nothing to say. Yeah, you do. Yeah, you do. Don't play. Yeah, you do. Offended. Peaks and valleys. I missed this. I got to the peak, but I turned my peak into a valley. I'm on autopilot to my success. I said all those phrases for you specifically because I know <laughs> I'm going. Go ahead. All right. Um, I'll use my recent car accident as an example because that's what kept uh, popping in my head as you were talking. <laughs> so I got into a car accident and it's at the 
intersection that I have to take in order to get home if I'm leaving from a certain place that I'm always at. It is the only intersection that I can take unless I'm willing to go 20, 30 minutes outside of my way home. So before accident, it was nothing, right? Autopilot. I know when to make the left hand turn. I know, like, I know the light pattern. Like, I know what's up. Since my accident, and since I'm back somewhat driving, I get to the intersection and my heart is racing. I'm sweating. I'm nervous. I, I have an anxiety attack every day at the intersection because I'm a offended that a truck hit me or if I see a truck that is similar to the truck that <laughs> hit me I am offended and I'm replaying the accident over in my head but not just the accident I'm replaying the physical therapy that I'm going to I'm replaying the pain that wakes me up in the middle of the night or the pain that doesn't allow me to do the things that I used to do or the pain that doesn't let me sit up or lay down or be comfortable ever. So it's replaying in my head. I have anxiety. Yesterday, I was in the car and wasn't an almost car accident, but I don't know what happened, but I got, I had an anxiety attack for two hours. I was in the car, I got dropped off, and I was not okay. I'm perfectly okay, <laughs> but I was not okay. Because I'm replaying not just what happened in the car, I'm replaying the car accident. And because I'm replaying the car accident, I'm going through all the emotions of insurance companies and all this crap that I'm dealing with. Only to, only because I'm allowing myself to replay it over again because I'm offended. I am. I am offended. I don't know why you use that word, Antonio, but I'm offended that I got into this car accident, I'm offended that an insurance company is trying to blame me when their client was in the wrong. I'm offended that I have pain. I'm offended that I have to pop pills in order to have a good night's rest. I'm offended that I need help putting shirts on or I need help, you know, doing things that I'm supposed to be able to do by myself. I'm offended by that. But if I let go of the offense, if I let go of the replan of the car accident, if I let go and just allow what is, it'll be okay. If I let go and breathe, right? If I just breathe and not tense up, or if I notice myself tense up, I don't spiral out of control. I don't have a full-blown panic attack at an intersection in Houston, Texas, in the middle of rush hour, I'll be okay. But as long as I'm focused on what offended me, as long as I'm focused on <laughs> everything that I'm dealing with, it gets worse, right? Because I'm offended and I'm attracting that energy to me and I get a phone call that makes it worse or something happens and it makes it worse or somebody's driving and not paying attention and I'm thinking, oh my God, I'm about to have another accident and it makes it worse. So, but if I let go, if I just allow it to be, if I let the pain be, if I let the accident be, if I let the insurance company be, it's going to work out. But as long as I'm offended and I'm holding on to my losses because I have put my identity in this car accident, then I become the car accident every single day in every area of my life. I am the walking car accident <laughs> as long as I'm offended by an accident that happened three wow. Fridays ago. Wow. But if I let it go, right? If I let it go, if I let it go and not worry about what's to come, not worry about injuries that won't go away and what, what the doctor is about to talk to me about tomorrow regarding that, if I just let it go and allow, it'll work out. But if I keep holding on to it and I keep being offended, then I am that car accident.
and I caused car accidents to everyone around me because the accident is my energy. Mm. 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 Were those closing thoughts? Sure. I mean, I'm just saying, we can do this for 19 hours. I got some closing thoughts. You want the last thoughts? You want me to go first? Or you, are you, or was you good? <laughs> I'm good. Yeah, I'm about to, I'm about to, I'm about to, I'm about to say a whole lot of wrong stuff. All right. I'm just telling you, let me tell you something. Some of you right now, you're on this call and you have an opinion of me that doesn't effing matter. It doesn't. It doesn't. You know why? Because your opinions of me will never get into my garden and plant a harvest. Mm. Let me help you in this place. Someone else's opinion of you will only create a harvest in your garden unless you pick up their opinion and plant it in your field. I am trying to help somebody today. <laughs> Antonio, Antonio, before you yes, say, sir. go ahead. I something. ain't mad at you. As go I ahead. If it's to Talisha, talk, you go right after him, Talisha. You go right after him, but I forgot I to come back to you. you. Talk. As I saw you on your soapbox, and you went there, I mean, you went into that rabbit hole, boy. You went up in there. I said to myself, bro, you've been listening to this man since April of last year. And he just told you about yourself. Did you hear what he said, Jerome? And I said, yeah. How'd that make you feel, Jerome? Well, I didn't particularly like everything he had to say about me. And then I said, now, Jerome. <laughs> I said, Jerome, now, what are you going to do about what he said? And you know what I said to myself, Antonio? I said, Antonio told you what to do. If you don't like what he said, then become a billionaire, and then you don't have to worry about what he said. Hello. Come on now, Jerome. What are you talking to this place? You just had a word for somebody. You just had a word for somebody. Yeah, I'm going to continuously say what I want to say. You know what I'm saying? If I was, and listen, anybody, there's no, at, at this, at my point of success, there is no color. We all talk alike. I, I dare you to go listen to Abraham Hicks. Good morning, it is. <laughs> I ain't lying. Oh, boy. I'm not lying. It is, right? Abraham Hicks will straight up cut you off if you talk of that poverty stuff. Wait, 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 wait. You are offending us. You are offending us. We need to talk. We need to direct. I'm serious. Oh, All of us in the 1% have the same talk. <laughs> I told you, me and Tim is going to come from two different sides and we're going to say the same thing. I did. Oh. That's the first thing I said. Before I before I hit you with another closing <laughs> rant, because I'm be done after I'm done. Talisha, did you get your answer, or if you find something else to say, uh, I find it proper that the universe has you in this place at this time. You're more than welcome to say something, because I said I was going to come back to you. Um, I think I need to listen to a replay because I, <laughs> no uh, doubt. I, I feel that there is some stuff that I'm offended about that I need to write down all of it to release. No me. doubt. I'm glad you said that. There are, if you are offended, you are the problem. All of you, all of you. That's what I was saying. There is no losses. There is no offense. That's what I was saying. Plants are not offended that you eat them. Like you know what I'm saying? There is no offense. There is just your programming. Some of you come from racist families that you can't stand an uppity person like me. I had a different word for you. Talking. <laughs> Others of you, you look just like me. You black like me. And you can't stand that I'm talking differently than you. Some of you, since I have an opinion, you make me militant. Since I'm confident, you make me arrogant. There is no offense. There's only your programming. 
And here's the thing. Every time you uh, offend it, you, you let me stand on your shoulders and get your money. Be glad. Because, listen, all your programming, whether you are secretly racist, publicly prejudiced, whether you are black and defended by black people, Mexican, whatever it is, it doesn't matter. Whether, you, whether I'm a man and I remind you of the strong men that you met or your father or, your, or your, your, your cousin pimp or whatever it may be, all of that stuff, you can send me to take your customers. It's the truth. Every last one of you have given me consent to make your money. That's not right. The wealth of the wicked is laid up for the righteous. I don't judge you. You judge me. You wicked. I'm not. Wow. I'm not. I may be I'm I may be confident, I may be arrogant, but I have never said a single bad word about you. Can you say that about me? By definition, I'm not wicked. You are. I got your wealth. Let me help you something. Let me help all you religious folk. I'm talking to every pastor, preacher, teacher, deacon, someone who believes in something. Every last one of you, you hear me, you hear me well. Because here's the deal. Only me, the only two, the only, there are only a few people in the top 1% that are doing what I'm doing, telling you the way it is. I'll name them all to you. They're in different categories. Joe Rogan, Grant Cardone, Gary V, Bernie Sanders, Beto O'Rourke, Barack Obama, Donald Trump, you just gonna have to accept that one, whether you like it or not. He is telling you how it is. Yeah. He is. He is telling you how it is. You don't like it or you do like it, just depending on where you're coming from. What's what's the president that everybody hated but now they like? Jimmy Carter. Jay Z. Ellen DeGeneres. Oprah, Denzel, and Jim Carrey. That's 13 people I can think of on the top of my head. If you go, just go look at them on YouTube or something. We all tell you the same thing. You the reason I'm here. And your silly self think if you was where I was at, your life would get better. No, it ain't. Money don't mean nothing. It don't. It don't. It don't. It does not. It does not. It, money never changed my life. My character did. It's the truth. It's the absolute truth. It is the absolute. I can show you twenty thousand dollars sales that you. I, I show you all sorts of stuff, and you wouldn't even be. You wouldn't even be able to imagine. I'm dead serious. I'm telling you right now, none of that changed my life. What changed my life was getting crucified and not being offended. What changed my life is putting Phil and Susan over my legacy on one side, Daryl on my legacy on the other side. Giving Tempest most of my legacy. That changed my life. Some of you don't even have the courage to let somebody go to the store for you. Promise you. You don't have the courage to let Phil and Susan take half of your vision, make changes, and let them have those changes, and then you help those changes. That's why you're not where I'm at. Because you can't treat people like that. It's the truth. I'm telling you, there's a lot of Fantastic changes coming soon from Phil and Susan on the Bureau of Dominant Speaker Size. I ain't gonna have nothing to do with that, but I'm gonna put all my money and resources behind it. Some of y'all can't do that. You can't. And since you can't, the universe said you can't be where I'm at. You gave me permission with your selfishness for me to employ them and not you. Period, point blank. You don't like it. And I'm a, I'm offensive because I got this sexy bronze skin and and this raspy voice. I don't I don't sound like Tempest guys, you know. 
Since I don't do that, you can't handle it. I ain't tipping, so I am not going to say it that way. Here is the truth. Here's the difference between me and you. And I say this with no respect whatsoever. The difference between me and you is you believe in God. I rule with God. That's the difference between me and you. In your Christian Bible, since most of you are Christian, there's a word called akon, E-I-K-O-N. That's Greek. That's Greek. It means in the Garden of Eden, God always intended you to rule with him. Adam, go ahead and name all this stuff. Adam to do the word, have dominion over it. Me and you, we gonna run this together. And then Adam said, "Now, nah, bruh, I got this." See, the problem is not ruling with God. That offended some of you. The problem is ruling as God. <laughs> Two different things. And y'all believe in him and let him rule your life. I don't. We run this together. And that's the fundamental difference between me and you. I know it's offensive. I know you can't handle it, but the only reason it's offensive is for the same reason Deion says she gained weight. It's just science. Took some steroids, gained some weight. It's offensive because you got programming. I'm offending your programming. That's the only reason. Here's the truth. My final thought. My closing thoughts. Thank God for them. I am not letting God run my life. We run it together. When he override me, I shut up, I be quiet. I'm not offended. And he override me all the time because I'm too too aggressive, too ambitious. But I'll never treat any last one of you like you're not God. And nobody, not damn one of you, could ever say, I've ever mistreated you. We may have had a misunderstanding, but I've never not treated you like God. Because when I rule with him, I have to respect the fact you are him or her. It depends on how you want to look at it. Because it'd be both, to be honest with you. Here's the truth. You give me permission to stay in the 1% and stop it. Now, either join me in helping me make you 1% or continue to take the path of least resistance. Use me as an excuse and I'm going to keep taking your customers. <laughs> Do you understand what I'm saying? Here's the deal. I told somebody on this phone call and on the, and who some people not on this phone call that I frequently buy companies and put them out of business. They said that's wrong. You can't do that. I said, yeah, the hell I can. I'm a monopoly. I don't want you in business. I said, and I quote, John Maxwell had his time. I'm coming for him. You can't do that. He's a nice guy. Yes, I can. It's been there for a decade. His time is up. And I said this here, and they couldn't get it. Because poverty is a hell of a drug. I said, he's not employing people. She's not making nobody rich. I'm not saying nothing bad about the guy. I'm saying when I put him out of business, I'm making you. I'm giving you his money. The universe wants me to put people out of business. Because while they sit up there hoarding resources, I'm sharing them. Wow. I got no time for your opinions. There are no losses. There are no mistakes. Tempest, close this out. <laughs> you look much better now, Antonio. You look much my My adrenaline is pumping. My adrenaline is pumping. You understand? I got a bunch of F you and me. You understand? That's it. My adrenaline is pumping. That's it. 
<laughs> all right, guys. Thank you all so much for hanging out with us for an hour and a half. God, uh, thank you. Uh, we love you all very much. Have what is that? What do you think you're doing? Star Trek. That's Star Trek. Have an amazing evening, and we'll see oh, you be, all. It, you know what? It could be Nano Nano. Remember Mark and Mindy, <laughs> Robin Williams, a long time ago. Ah, 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 Nickelodeon, late at night. I remember, yeah. Yeah, Mork and Mindy. That's one of the greatest shows of all time. I don't care what you say. That's yes. it. My three dads, Mork and Mindy. Oh, I'm sorry. Anyway, keep going. <laughs> Bye, everybody. Good night, Antonio. <laughs> Go to bed. I am. I'm so on the way to bed. <laughs> all right, everybody. <laughs> oh,